Imagine a perfect society, one that is practical, humanitarian, and ethical. In this society, people choose their own goals based on their own values. Embrace the idea that success and failure are necessary to learn and to grow, and focus on the process of discovery in a marketplace of values. To avoid having the government impose visions or goals on you, a perfect society would have to be a free society. And to understand how to build this free society, there are a couple of things you need to know. Time is made up of the past, the present, and the future. Our lives exist within this time. Murder takes away your life, which is your future. Enslavement steals your liberty. That takes away your present. And theft is taking away your property, meaning that you lose the portion of your past that produced it. Property, the things you have and own, is a product of your life and liberty. It is a part of nature that you can turn into a valuable use. You can also use property to engage in voluntary exchange with someone else. This is known as trading. Two people can engage in voluntary property exchange when there is mutual consent. That is, when both people see a benefit in trading. Otherwise, they wouldn't engage in that exchange. Third is the principle of ownership, which says you own your own life. No one else owns your life, and in turn, you cannot justly own another person's life. Since you own your own life, you are responsible for it. <laughs> Government has two roles in a free society, to protect and to govern. First, to protect. You have the right to protect your own life, liberty, and property from others who may want to forcefully take it from you. Therefore, you can ask someone else to help you defend these things. For example, you can ask the government. But the right to defend is not the same as the right to attack. You cannot initiate force against someone else. Therefore, you cannot ask anyone to initiate force against others on your behalf, even if you're asking the government. Second, to govern. You can seek leaders for yourself, but you cannot impose a leader on other people. It doesn't matter how a leader is selected. They are still a person, and the principle of self-ownership still applies both to you, others, and the official. So an official has no right to take your life, liberty, or property to redistribute it without your consent. If he does, it is the same as a government official committing murder, enslaving others, or stealing from the people. Without a government imposing goals or vision on people, you are free to dream of your own. Now, what is it that we can do to make our world more like a free society? Number one, stop asking government officials to initiate force on our behalf. That way, problems that arise when governments use force without consent will decline. Number two, Recognize that action done to someone or someone's actions done to you are virtuous only when there is voluntary mutual consent. Virtue can only exist where there is free choice. Number three, respect the principle of self-ownership. You are responsible for your life, but you are not entitled to control anyone else's life. Good people who tolerate the use of force as a means to their own ends are responsible for much of the evil in this world. It is not evil people alone that cause evil to arise, but good people who empower evil people by consenting to their use of force. Number four, be courageous. Building a free society requires effort. You must be willing to think, to talk, and to act, especially when it is easier to do nothing. That is the philosophy of liberty.